I just I want to say one thing. I'm I'm very privileged to have this being my second uh, PK night here, and as, as such, people ask me. They say, "How is it possible to prepare a talk to deliver in just six minutes and forty seconds?" And and I remind people that I'm older and I'm on diuretics. <laughs> Don't get ahead of me here. And so I drink a lot of water before the talk, and believe me, this is the longest six minutes and 40 seconds that I'll have all day. With that, let's go. When I was a kid, my father was a big fan of movie greats who many of you younger folks may have never heard of, folks like W.C. Fields, Kay Kaiser, Jack Benny, Fred Allen, and of course the Marx Brothers. Now my dad was a fairly serious surgeon kind of guy, so us kids thought if he was laughing at this stuff, it had to be good. And as a teenager, I found out I got a particular kick out of Groucho Marx's quick wit and goofy style, and I immersed myself into all things Marxist. I watched all the movies and TV shows. I read all the books about the brothers. I even painted a mural in my dorm hall that was taken off that magazine cover. I even had a ready-to-go Groucho suit for Halloween. And yet, while speaking to a group of college freshmen last fall, I made a reference to Groucho Marx, and all I saw was blank stares, the sort of that you get when you tell a kid to shovel the snow, or that TV used to have just three channels in black and white, or that the iPhone has a voice feature. <laughs> At that point, I realized we were witnessing the unraveling of a piece of our cultural fabric. And so this is my charge, my mission, my raison d'etre, as it were, to reintroduce in six minutes one of the country's comic greats and hopefully send you away humming a few bars of Captain Spaulding and perhaps feeling a little revolutionary. But you already know him. You just may not realize it. He's the man who brought us, I wouldn't want to be along to any club that would have me as a member. And his iconic face is immortalized in millions of pairs of those goofy glasses with the attached noses and eyebrows, appropriately called Groucho glasses, of which I have owned more pairs than I care to acknowledge. But let's back up. Julius Marx was born in New York City in October of 1890. At the end, at the age of 15, began a career that spawned vaudeville, motion pictures, and television. Beginning in 1909, at the encouragement of Mother Minnie, he and his brothers, later known as Gummo, Zeppo, Chico, and Harpo, took to the stage as singers as the Four Nightingales. The boys soon discovered that they were better comedians than singers, and they eventually found the big time in a series of madcap Broadway shows and motion pictures, and they made 13 movies together with wisecracks and ad libs that infuriated the directors but delighted their audiences. And arguably, it was the cast of foils that made Groucho's lines so much fun. In Duck Soup, his frequent leading lady, Margaret Dumont, says, I feel you are the most able statesman in all of Fredonia, to which he applies, well, that covers a lot of ground. Say, you cover a lot of ground yourself. You better beat it. I hear they're going to tear you down and put up an office building where you're standing. <laughs> you can leave in a taxi. If you can't get a taxi, you can leave in a huff. If that's too soon, you can leave in a minute and a huff. You know, you haven't stopped talking since I got here. You must have been vaccinated with a phonograph needle. <laughs> she replies, oh, your excellency. And he says, you're not so bad yourself. Or this classic exchange from Horse Feathers, when Groucho tries to get into a speakeasy guarded by Chico. Hey, who are you? I'm fine, thanks. Who are you? I'm fine too, but you can't come in unless you give the password. Well, what's the password? Oh, no, you got to tell me. Hey, I tell you what. I give you three guesses. It's the name of a fish. Well, is it Mary? Ha, <laughs> ha, that's a no fish. Well, she drinks like one. Let me see. Is it sturgeon? Hey, you crazy. Sturgeon, he's a doctor, cuts you open when you're sick. Now I give you one more chance. I got it, haddock. Hey, that's a funny, I got a haddock too. What do you take for a haddock? Well, now sometimes I take aspirin and sometimes I take a calomel. <laughs> Say, I'd walk a mile for a calomel. You mean a chocolate calomel, I like that too, but you know, guess it, goodbye. Hey, what's the matter, you not understand English? You can't come in unless you say swordfish. Now I give you one more guess. Swordfish. So, say, is it swordfish? Hey, that's it. Come on in. You guess it. In 1947, Marx was chosen to host the radio quiz program, You Bet Your Life, which moved to television in 1950 and ran for 11 years. Now, remember, this was an incredibly popular show, in spite of the fact that it consisted of just Groucho, his lectern, George Fenneman, his announcer, and two contestants. 
Oh, and a bird that popped down whenever someone said the secret word. And if they said the secret word, you got a contestant, to, you and your contestant got to split, split $100. <laughs> That's about $1,000 in today's money. But the most famous exchange is supposed to have happened in 1947 when Groucho found one of his contestants had 12 children. 12? Why do you have so many children? That's a lot of responsibility. Well, Groucho, because I love my children and I love my husband. Well, I love my cigar too, but I take it out of my mouth every once in a while. <laughs> In and among his numerous marriages and time spent joyfully insulting any, anyone who got in his path, Groucho, who was sharp to the very end, rounded out his life writing books, doing a one-man show called An Evening with Groucho, making plenty of appearances on talk show, and most frequently being a favorite guest of Dick Cavett. Oh, and cavorting with younger celebrities, here with Gene Simmons and Rob Halford, who happened to share a birthday. Groucho was presented with an honorary Academy Award in 1974, the same year that Burbank High School put on a Marx Brothers Film Festival at which he was to be the guest of honor. But he was, in the end, too sick to attend. I graduated. Julius Henry Marx died in August 1977, an event sadly overshadowed by the death of Elvis Presley three days earlier. Songwriter Irving Berlin had quipped, the world would not be in such a snarl had Marx been Groucho instead of Karl. Groucho had jokingly suggested his epitaph read, excuse me, I can't stand up. <laughs> and so I will leave the last words to Groucho as Captain Jeffrey T. Spaulding and Margaret Dumont from Animal Crackers. Hello, I must be going. I cannot stay, I came to say, I must be going. I'm glad I came, but just the same, I must be going. La la. For my sake, you must stay. If you should go away, you'll spoil this party I am throwing. I'll stay a week or two. I'll stay the summer through. But I am telling you, I must be going.